Hey guys, I'm Perry Nemroff, and welcome back for another episode of Collider Best of the Week, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the videos on the Collider Videos YouTube channel or to read all the articles that go up on Collider.com and you want to check out some of the best of the best right in one spot. We're kicking off this week's show with a really heated discussion that went down on Movie Talk, and it's all about the news that Margot Robbie and David Ayer are re-teaming for an all-female DC villains movie called Gotham City Sirens. I'm getting really frustrated. And the reason I'm frustrated, because if I didn't give a crap about the DC Cinematic Universe, I just wouldn't care. I Like, if I find out they're screwing up the Power Rangers thing, which, who knows, maybe that, that, that movie will be good, but I'm saying, if we find out they screw up the Power Rangers universe, I'll just go, oh, okay, well, whatever. You know, they took a shot and it didn't work. But I care about the DC Cinematic Universe. I care about what Warner Brothers does here. I want them to succeed, and I keep putting myself out there on this optimistic ledge that they keep pushing me off. I'm not gonna get as upset as you did, but I, I tend to agree with you. I think that this is this is goes back to the conversation we had the other day where I was on board with DC putting Batman before Justice League 2. I thought that was a good play. I think that was them kind of rearranging their strategy. I think this does play right into what we were talking about the other day. The, the, the negative side is them saying, well, people really liked Harley Quinn. Let's give them that movie. Let's benefit off of that. Let's make all this money off of Harley Quinn because that's who they like the best. What does it say for the narrative? To me, it says nothing. To me, I could be wrong, wait till the movie comes out, and then we're like, oh, it actually does serve the story. It just isn't leaning that way so far for what they have put out there. Now, at least Harley yeah. Quinn does have some form of box office now, and I do understand what they're doing. They're like, look, we did Suicide Squad. A lot of people didn't like it, but it made, it made more money than Deadpool, globally. It made more money than Deadpool. That's a lot of money. $735 million is a lot of money. So that's, it's a business, and they're like, look, more people want to see the further adventures of Harley Quinn. How do we do that? Do we do a solo film? Do we do Har Harley Quinn and the Joker? Do we just call it Harley Quinn? Do we try to figure out other ways to incorporate the other DC characters? So I see what they're trying to do, but the way they're doing it is why the reactions are such because it's just a, it's a haphazard way of reacting. In other DC news, we also found out that Justice League 2 is being delayed to make some room for Ben Affleck's standalone Batman movie. Let's check out what the Heroes panel thought about that. Whether or not Zack Snyder's coming back for part two, if they're not ready for that or if he has other commitments and if they're fast tracking Ben Affleck's, I feel like this is going to be a good change. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't speculate on whether Zack Snyder's directing the second half. Uh, I, I have mixed feelings about his work in general, uh, but that like the this this gives me a good confident feeling whether it's to give it time to make sure that two is ready or whether it's to prepare for a change of direction. I'm kind of into this new schedule. I think with the introduction of the Justice League and you know characters from other dimensions like Apocalypse and all this other kind of crazy stuff is happening. That's happening in the Batman's world. So I think you know it's not going to be a Nolan type of realistic world. But I think what he wants is to have the time to work on the script is what he's basically saying is like, I'm still working on the script. We haven't locked that down yet. So everybody else can say we're going to shoot, but mm. guess what? I'm Batman. I'm also directing it. So it's not actually happening until I feel confident and we're not rushing in just to satisfy some kind of release date. I particularly am very happy that someone like of Ben Affleck's stature is able to say that. And I wanted that to stick because I want to be really happy with the Batman film, Ashley. It's also because he's a giant human being like your height, so he can walk around and do whatever he wants. He's very intimidating. <laughs> I think it's great from a branding perspective as well because everything's better with Batman. Everybody loves Batman. He is the king of the DC universe, whether that's the intention or not. Mm -hmm. And I think it might be a sneaky way if he does really well in that movie and people really like it to be like, why don't you co-direct Justice League? Ooh. Now that's purely speculative on my behalf, but I think that adjusting the slate that way for two very strong directors, regardless of whether or not you like their style, coming onto this big project, and maybe Justice League was really overwhelming. They might be an interesting team to pair up. In case you haven't noticed, it's Rogue One weekend. We have a non-spoilers review and a spoilers review up for you to check out, but right now we're gonna get some brief thoughts from this week's Jedi Council panel. I came out of it so excited, like a 10-year-old boy. Again, <laughs> I know what you're saying, Tiffany. I'm always like a 10-year-old boy no, with my Star Wars No, I was Wars laughing shirts. at the text message that I got from you right after you saw it because I texted Ken and I was like, I saw that you saw it. What do you think? And then I'm not, I'll let you say what I you I said at the time it was my favorite Star Wars movie ever. Whoa. Now, Whoa. I did then say in the parking lot afterwards, first to Jeremy Johns, <laughs> later to Mark Ellis, 
I'm going to calm down, and I know that's not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into I don't want to break down, but there's just some of my most favorite Star Wars moments are in this film. So I was excited, and I'm not going to let that excitement stop. It is going to, I'm going to give in to my excitement. <laughs> give in to it. But that was my initial reaction. Tiffany, you, you had fun the premiere, which we will talk about, but. I did. Uh, my initial reaction, a couple of things. Some of the best battles, fight scenes, fight sequences that I've ever seen in a Star Wars movie. It is just mind blowing. Um, definitely walked out with some favorite new characters. Not a surprise, K2SO. I said it before the movie even came out. I was like, he's gonna be my favorite. I already went and bought the toy. I don't even care what he does in the movie. But he definitely lives up to the being the favorite new droid expectations. I really, really love the movie. And I've spoken with so many of my New York critic friends now. And Oh, New Yorker not, critics. What, well, they, they don't have the luxury of getting yeah. to go to an L.A. premiere. <laughs> yeah. They all saw it after me, and I, I was just, I, I wanted to talk to them about it so badly. And a lot of them have not read Catalyst, mm. and I don't want to make this a discussion about Catalyst, but there's no doubt in my mind that people will appreciate this movie and what happens in it and the characters a million times more if they had that backstory. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I, I I did. I tweeted out. It's one, and I know we, we, we don't have like the Marvel Cinematic Universe or a bunch of ser uh, movies in the series, but one of the best Star Wars all time. I, I, it's mm -hmm. up there. It's, it, it's, I don't know where it's landing, but I was smiling from ear to ear the entire time. K2SO. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's now on my, uh, the droid Black Series figure is on my Christmas yep. list. This week's Collider Nightmare segment comes from one of our Twitter questions from a viewer who was asking about worthy horror sequels. So if you're looking for a list of great horror sequels, we've got them coming at you right now. I love Insidious Chapter 2. I okay. love it. I think it is so weird and totally off the rails, but I think it's the perfect sequel for Insidious because it's totally different, but still in the bigger universe. Mm. Um, and, and I always say to people, if you didn't like the further stuff in Insidious 1, you ain't gonna like Insidious <laughs> Chapter 2 because it's like all further stuff. But yeah. I just love how weird and goofy and almost campy right. it is. And yeah. that, that, rule, that like rocks to me. If I'm gonna go with Alien and Aliens. Mm. I think Aliens is a is a damn worthy sequel, and uh, which still a lot of horror elements. I know a lot of people say, well, it's an action movie, but I still say there's a lot of horrific elements oh, yeah. in Aliens. And then I want to get a shout out because I love me some Nightmare on Elm Street three, The Dream Warriors. Uh, I think that's up there for me yeah. uh, as far as it, it will never beat the original. I think the original is a masterpiece. But part three, the expansion of the mythology, yeah. um, putting Freddy a little bit more up there. He's just on that edge of becoming the stand-up comedian, but he's not quite there yet, and he's still just batshit you-know-what and crazy, and I love the way that A Nightmare on Elm Street uh, th part three looks and mm -hmm. feels, mm -hmm. and it's something that is very close to my heart because it, uh, it hit at that right time. Uh, I think I was like 13 where I'm like, oh, I got to see this. And it was great. Someone tweeted me recently asking me what my favorite Final Destination movie was. Oh. And I honestly can say I like the first and second equally. Mm -hmm. I adore those two movies so much. So that to me is the perfect example of a sequel that kept it right at the same level. Sure. All right. Nice. We have such sights to show you. Oh, you love Of course, it. I'm going with Hellraiser 2. Yeah, you love that. Come nice. on now. The psych, I nice. think Hellraiser 2 ups the ante of the first Hellraiser, and I actually like it better Whoa! than the first Hellraiser. Now for our interview section of the show, I am insanely jealous of Steve because he got to do interviews for two of my favorite movies of the year. First up, we're going to check out a little piece of his interview with Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling for La La Land. Was there one sequence that you were really nervous about? or Because this was a very challenging, I mean, mu music, dance, everything. What was the thing that I guess you were most nervous about before production started? Um, Piano? I guess my first day was uh, the scene where I had to play this the theme from the movie on the piano in, in this one shot that Damien had prepared. So I, I lost a little sleep over that, as you can imagine. But it was kind of a nice way to start because after that it felt like, okay, everything, anything was possible. But really there was always something looming on this film. You know, yeah. Once we did one thing, we were, we were rehearsing for something else. And, uh, um, so there was always, you couldn't really uh, feel too confident at any point because there was always something else uh, 
you know, next, like next week. Next week we're going to shoot a duet on the hill in one take at magic hour. So we have an hour to do it. And it was like, yeah, it kept coming. We've already shared two of Steve's interviews for Rogue One on last week's show, but there's still more to come. So right now we're going to check out a clip from his interview with Riz Ahmed and Alan Tudyk, with the two of them talking about some of their most memorable moments for making the movie. I would imagine there was a lot of highlights, but was there one thing that you'll always remember, like a highlight from production? Mine was going up in that spaceship. And, uh, they, day get, one. That was your day that one. That was my day one. Well, I, would, I think I, that's, we should all refer to that as day one. Well, no, I, there, is a, there is a timeline that involved going to Jordan. Well, it's before, it was before I started, and then it's <laughs> after I started. Yeah. Is how it's the common yeah, timeline that's, that's, that's used good. in there. Yeah, that's good. BR. Before <laughs> is. Uh, we were in the spaceship his first day. I remember going, here's the new guy. And we, <laughs> it was built out. It was like a box, and it was a spaceship inside. They hooked it up to a crane and brought us like two, three stories in the air so that when we landed at this base, we actually landed at this base. And there were other ships, too, that did that when we were in the trenches and stuff where they're flying them over you as they're flying in. So when we were in the spaceship and they had the giant kind of LCD, uh, the, the giant oh, right. projector screens as well. Instead of just green screen, you could really see all was going on. You can tell we had a lot of fun filming this, going you? And, and not just around, above. Yeah, yeah. because I was flying Everywhere the spaceship. Everywhere you looked, cool, there cool, was cool. just scenery moving. This week we got a report from THR claiming that J.J. Abrams is uniting with HBO to give us a new show called Glare, which is all about the exploration and colonization of a brand new planet. Is the TV talk panel feeling this idea? Let's find out. I, I love science fiction. I'm just at a loss. I feel like we're losing the like all out crazy sci fi stuff outside of Star Wars. You know, like I want like I'm, I'm watching Enterprise right now, which is the last of the Star Trek uh, series to be aired before this one that's uh, coming on uh, CBS All Access. And I love like just exploring, meeting aliens. But it seems like now what's hot right now is movies like The Martian. The National Geographic show Mars, which I've been really enjoying, it's about yeah. humans con con uh, colonizing. No, can't say that. <laughs> colonizing a new planet. I think that's what seems to be the the, the thing that's hot right now. But I kind of want to see like I don't know. I want to see some aliens and stuff. I don't know. But in JJ, on. we trust. So do I know, you, does that true. make you feel a little more confident that he's attached to this project, or does that not make a difference to you? But see, I feel like he's at such a level right now. It's like Spielberg. Spielberg produces this. He produces this. It's like what? How much involvement does he actually have? I hope that JJ's hands-on more than I think Spielberg is right now, but I don't know what that means when I see, like, from J.J. Abrams. Like, the what bigger is... he gets, the harder it is. I think he was pretty involved in things back in the day, Lost, Fringe, etc. but when we come to the West Worlds of the world, then mm. I don't know how involved he actually does get, so it would be interesting to see. I think that he, if his name's going to be attached, though, he's going to make sure it's good, especially if it's tied right. to HBO. What would be kind of awesome uh, if Glare was almost like a... We're already set up on this planet, Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit like a wild, wild west of a space, like of, of a new planet. And we have we have the colony already kind of on its way. We don't focus on the travel to the planet. It's more of like, okay, we're at this planet. Now yeah. what? So it's kind of like an interstellar when Anne Hathaway's on that planet and she's by herself growing some stuff mm -hmm. and she's starting the colonization and she's got that. That's the kind of thing that kind of interests me because I do love space travel and I do love the idea of HBO doing this because they still haven't done a show like this. That's the one thing I've been asking for from HBO is more science fiction. We have Westworld now which is great, but I kind of wanted it because Battlestar Galactica is one of my favorite shows of all time, so I wanted more of like a Battlestar Galactica. I think that's what I'm missing, but yeah. this, with this, this names, this pedigree, the fact that it's on HBO, they're going to go all out. They're going to do a good job with this. So I, I have faith in this. Now it's time for the dot-com portion of the show when we get to highlight some of the written features done by the excellent gang over there. It's that time of year, so end of 2016 coverage is starting to roll in. This week, we're highlighting a piece from Aubrey Page called The Year That Horror's Final Girls Fought Back, in which she discusses how this year's crop of horror movies successfully diversifies female-led narratives beyond the familiar trope. Another hot topic this time of year, Oscars. Adam Chitwood's Oscar Beat column continues, and this latest edition is all about the best original song category, where there's a crazy amount of competition. We've also got a new set visit report for you. Matt Goldberg got to visit the set of Underworld Blood Wars in Prague, and he's got loads of information on the movie up right now on Collider.com. This right here is his Things to Know piece, but there's also some grateful interviews which are well worth a read. Also from Matt, we've got a Rogue One feature called The Problem with That CGI Character. This is a spoiler-heavy article, so we're blurring the text right now, but if you've seen the film, you might know which character he's talking about. Do you disagree or agree with him? Let us know in the comments section below. 
And lastly, if multiple viewings of Rogue One isn't enough for you and you want more sci-fi in your life, there's a staff piece up that lists the best sci-fi movies available for you to watch on Netflix right now, including things like Contact, Turbo Kid, Armageddon, and so much more. Now it's time for the Schmodown section of the show, and the first match up, per usual, is the team match. We've got Six Degrees going up against Team Trek. Let's check out a preview. And we've got a mission today. We've got a mission to get to the spectacular. And the only way we got to do that is we've got to take out a quite lovely team. Yeah, this is going to be tough because we got, we got, listen, this, they're class acts, so we have to be class acts. We have to, we have to treat step them our game up with them. respect. Mm -hmm. I definitely didn't think we'd be here. I, de I thought maybe we would just do one match and then go home, and that was it, and say, hey, bye. That was fun. Brienne and Stacy, Team Six Degrees. A little bit of leather right. in the opening. Look at the catwalk. A very confident look by Brienne, and cool. here comes the wearing wanger shirt. They're wearing wanger shirt. The man's man, Scott Men, Jason, Justice, Inman, Team Trek. Whoa! Look at these dapper gentlemen coming out. Oh, they brought flowers. John Travolta plays Turl in which sci-fi film? I don't know, so I'm gonna say Battlefield Earth. That would be correct. Oh, Safe guess. Yeah. Yeah. In Pirates of the Caribbean, Barbosa was captain of which ship for 10 years? The Black Pearl? Give him another oh, point. All right. Another point for Inman. This week for single matches, it is a big one. It is Makuga versus Harloff 2. Let's check it out. Redemption. That's the name of the game. You're not going to hear a lot of me putting down the character of the wild man, Josh Makuga, but you will hear me say his luck started with me. Let me tell you something before we get into that, okay? 2014, everybody thought that I was just some fluke. I had to throw another personality in the old schmo down, and then I went all the way to the final. Everybody thought that I was underrated. They underestimated me. What's going on today? I'm still being underestimated. He is the 2015 what Ultimate Schmodown winner. Playing some sort of, ooh, he's got a knife. The former movie trivia what? Schmodown team champion and the number six ranked contender. Ladies and gentlemen, Christian Dark Harlow. He is the 2014 <laughs> Ultimate Schmodown finalist. <laughs> hey. The 2016 Ultimate Schmodown semifinalist. And the number four ranked contender, here is the wild man, Josh Mokuga. Josh Lucas plays a coach by the name of Don Haskins in what basketball film? Oh, stupid glory, uh, glory road. That is correct. Well done. Wow. What MCU regular played Orlando Bloom's dad, known as Bootstrap Bill, in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest? Um, MCU regular. He's thinking hard. Bootstrap Bill. Bootstrap Bill. Five. Stellan Skarsgård? I don't know how he does it. I don't it. know how. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how he how? pulls it out. All right, bippity boppity, Stellan Skarsgård. And now it's time for Meme of the Week, the segment of the show when we get to highlight a meme or a piece of artwork that one of you have sent in. This week, we've got two winners, and no surprise here, one has something to do with Star Wars. These drawings right here were done by someone named Sebastian who submitted them via Facebook. Super talented artist. I love these drawings of Mark and Christian done Star Wars style. And now here's our second winner. It's a poster done for our Schmodown Spectacular, which is set to air on December 23rd. This poster was done by Robert Fodera. Robert, Sebastian, thank you guys so much for sending these in. We love them. Do you want your meme or artwork featured right here on Collider Best of the Week? All you gotta do is pick a moment from one of our shows, make a meme or a piece of art about it, and send it on over to mailbag at collider.com, or you can tweet it at us and use the hashtag Collider Best of the Week. Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the Best Damn Move Related Show on the Planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California, and we are so glad to make you a part of... Screw it! Oh, here, John <laughs> Smith! We'll do it live! We'll do it live! 
<laughs> it's gonna be one of those days. Uh, Josh and I are supposed to have a mandate. We had it scheduled. It was in the calendar. And what does he do instead? He gets engaged <laughs> instead of watching <laughs> Buffalo versus Pittsburgh with me. Really rude. What has happened? This is highly irregular. You know, I cannot work in these conditions. I don't know what is going to make Josh Bakuga happier. The fact that he got engaged <laughs> over the weekend or the fact that Bad Boys 4 has been announced. What's going on, man? I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little inside joke for all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> like, you know, like they're professional dancers and I'm doing like the robot or something. That's what one kind of is doing. that your robot? No, the robot's got to go like know this. What my yeah, robot you can't is. like do a shimmy robot. No. Robots don't shimmy. Yeah. This is awesome. This is going to be a great show this today, guys. Is Deadpool Golden Globe nomination a start to maybe the Oscars nominating comic book films? Uh, the Oscars have nominated comic book films several times for many different Oscars. So I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and no, the, the Golden Globes, the Golden Globes is an atrocious joke. So no, the, nothing that happens to the Golden Globes means anything. I don't know what you guys think. Use uh, <laughs> your aggressive feelings, <laughs> yes. boy. I Enjoy like the age. <laughs> Let it flow through you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now I see why Chewbacca mom's a thing. Uh, I was a little busy this weekend, David. Um, um, what were you doing? <laughs> ditching, 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 David. Ditching, yeah. ditching. Yeah. Ditching. I was at the sports bar by myself watching the game, just just alone. I'm sorry, David. Did you at least tell him that you were proposing this no. weekend? No, he oh, didn't. No, he said nothing. Thought about it on Instagram. Revenge of the sis. The revenge of the sis. Revenge of the sissies. Them sissy folk. I mean, Karen Gillan, uh, Emma, Emma. Emma, Emma Watson. Emma Watson. Emma Watson. You were right. Yeah. What did What did Christian say? No, and Emma I Thompson. Not, I, I he did say Emma Thompson. Thompson. Okay. Now he I would love it. to see Emma Thompson. Yeah. I'm pretty really sure it's in the blooper reel, but now I can never say the right Emma after that. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth. I'm gonna stop right there to not screw things up like I did yesterday. Because uh, <laughs> I went to the Rogue One premiere and man, it felt good. What a night. What a night. Also here, Jeremy Johns. <laughs> Is it as cool as staying home and doing nothing, Mark? Which, by the way, congratulations to Josh yeah. McCuga. Yeah. Um, whether it's it nanotechnology, mind right. control, well, he's got it. something over that's her it. parents, I don't know. Somehow Josh McCuga <laughs> talked a girl far out of his league to, into marrying him. So congrats to you, to Amanda. Blink twice if you need help. I, I thought the trailer would end with Emma, Tom, uh, Emma Thompson. <laughs> no, it's okay. contagious. Uh, everybody no. knows cut. We got to start uh, over. We've already shared some of Steve's interviews for Rogue, Rogue One. Rogue One Wii shoots. Let's not forget about that. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> what are you doing? I love you guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> like, you really just did. You became one of your dogs right now. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Hi. They Hi. are yeah. 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 I love them. <laughs> Great. All right. <laughs> wait, 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 it's Christian. What is here happening? The biggest surprise is the total shout outs of Martin Scorsese's silence. What'd I say? Shout out. Oh. Shout out. What up, Martin Scorsese? Uh, as someone who has not seen Rogue One, you didn't? And, uh, <laughs> and, and someone who I was young, I was going on my first date with this girl I had a crush on. We went and saw Preacher's Wife. We came out. She ran into her friends and she said, Tell them you're my cousin. Oh. No. Swear. Swear. That's ha a real hashtag. Tell your yeah, that's a real Man. story. Ashley cracking up over that story. Real nice. <laughs> that's because Mo is evil. She's like, that was me. Yeah, yeah. I've done that. Mo's like, I know what that's I like. like that. <laughs> when Emma Thompson hosts SNL. In the no, spring. Emma Watson. <laughs> She, it just happened, it happened again. Okay. Emma Thompson's wow. in the show and she's wow. coming again. I didn't anticipate seeing boobs and then I saw boobs at the end. I'm like, whoa. So many boobs. Wow. Josh, this like, show, sold. Yeah, this yeah. show went from sold. like a seven to a 10. All right. Good looking oh. boobs, too. There were some, they were that was a hot boobs. scene. Who do you think wins between Bong and Guns? Bong? Kong, Kong and Godzilla. <laughs> well, Bong wins over a lot, say the voters of last November. Uh, Christian, how you doing? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> I moved to LA for this, by the way. I could have just been sitting at home, doing three videos a week, playing my video games, watching porn, but no, I was like, let's go to LA. Why not? Now, listen, earlier in the show, we asked you guys to jump on our poll and tell it. That didn't sound right <laughs> at all. And of course, Wendy Lee. Oh, at Wendy Lee Zane, you social media. Want to try that again? <laughs> I can. You can find me down there. Uh, well, well, oh, no. no. Hey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is too good. We've lost uh, control. Stop. <laughs>
<laughs> See ya. She's leaving. She, she's, she's gone. gone. Good night, she's everybody. Gone. See you next time. <laughs> bye bye. And that is a wrap on this week's edition of Collider Best of the Week. You guys know what I like you to do. Please check out the comment section below. Share some of your favorite moments from this week's lineup of shows. I'm Perry Nemiroff. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P Nemiroff. Please go on over and bookmark Collider.com. Subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel. Watch and read everything you can. But just in case you don't have enough time, that's what Best of the Week is for. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.